Hey everybody, welcome back to Football Talk with Vinny. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Philadelphia Eagles. Now obviously with the Eagles, they had the sixth pick in the draft, but they did a couple of trades. We'll get into that in a minute. But again, that's why they are the next team. And I got to be honest with you, as a Cowboys fan, the Eagles are the team I actually hate the most. So this is the one team I actually don't want to do. But again, my channel is about everything NFL. So I'm going to get into it. Again, I'm not really going to have any of the biases that you would think that most fans would have when I go over other teams because again I want this to be informative again even though I hate the Eagles if you are an Eagles fan watching and maybe you're not familiar with what their offseason was like I want to kind of help and kind of give you a quick glimpse of what their offseason was like so first we'll start with free agency again that obviously goes first before the draft so they did sign Joe Flacco to a one-year deal, $4 million. They were able to get Anthony Harris, the safety from the Vikings. Now, he was a pro bowler two years ago, and last year he kind of had a down year, had no interceptions. But again, I think they got him pretty much for a steal because they got him for nothing. It was a one-year, $5 million deal. And if he can play anywhere like he played that pro bowl year, you're getting a steal of a player for sure. They actually brought back Jordan Howard. He was their old running back. He played for Miami last year. So, you know, I think that's a good add. It kind of gives you depth behind Sanders, your running back that was very good last year. And they actually just recently picked up Ryan Kerrigan. So again, adding some depth on that defensive line. So I really like that move for their team. Now, obviously, let's, before we get into the draft, we'll go into the big actual news, which was the trading of Carson Wentz, right? They're able to trade Carson Wentz. And in, re and in return, I believe they got like a second and a fourth round pick, I want to say. But now the good news about the trade, though, for the Philadelphia Eagles is <clears throat> that second round pick becomes a one if they meet one of two criteria. Either Carson Wentz has to play 75% of snaps, or I believe he has to play in 70% of snaps and the Colts make the playoffs. So if one of those two things happen, which I think both will happen, um, definitely play 75% of the snaps unless he gets hurt. But even if he doesn't, and he's close to that 70%, I think they're probably likely to make the playoffs. They have a good, very, very good roster, but we'll get into them in a later video. So realistically, I think that's a one. So you're really getting a one and I believe a four. So to me, the fact that they paid Carson Wentz the big money and he played very bad last year and you were still able to get a one, I really think that's a win for the organization. Obviously for the Philadelphia Eagles, you're moving forward with Jalen Hurts now, so you're gonna see what he has. And we kind of all realized that the decision was made to move forward and actually to have Jalen Hurts be the starter once they traded out of that number six pick. And again, they actually traded with Miami. Um, it was that really weird three-team trade where Miami moved back from three to 12 with the Niners, but then within an hour moved back up to six. So they were probably talking to Philly before they tra to traded their third overall pick to the Niners. So the Dolphins probably knew they were gonna move up to six. So kinda, I think everyone kinda knew what was going on. But again, in that trade, right, they moved down from six to 12 and they, they picked up an additional one um, in next year's draft. And I believe they picked up like an additional three or four. So again, quickly, um, I'm going to go over the draft now. So now that they moved back to 12, right, everyone knew they were kind of out of the running for quarterback, which was good. At least it knows now that they're no longer trying to get another quarterback to compete with Jalen Hurts. It's actually going to be Hurts' job and to see what he can do this season. Um, but for the draft, obviously they picked at 12, but they made a very weird trade with the Dallas Cowboys actually at 10. Moved up two spots, really like the move for Philadelphia. They get Devontae Smith. You knew the Giants were probably going to take him at 11, so you had to trade with Dallas at that point. And I think I think it was a lot was made really for nothing in terms of why, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, why would you trade back from 10 to 12 and let the Philadelphia Eagles pick up Devontae Smith, who could potentially beat you for the next decade? But realistically, that's not the way you should look at it because if you're the Dallas Cowboys, again, if the Philadelphia Eagles don't get him at 10, the Giants are gonna get him at 11. So he's gonna be in your division regardless. It's just, do you want him to play for the Giants or the Eagles? And at that point, if you're gonna to have to play him twice a year, it doesn't matter. So the fact that Dallas picked up a third round pick is great. But again, we're not talking about the Dallas Cowboys, it is the Philadelphia Eagles. I like the move, you trade it up. You definitely knew you needed a receiver. So I think that was a great move. Second round, you drafted a center, um, Landon Dickerson. Um, third round, you drafted Milton Williams, a defensive tackle. I really like those two picks. Again, you are getting very old on the offensive line, kind of like the Dallas Cowboys. 
You had a great offensive line for the last couple years, but those guys are starting to age, starting to get older, and you're going to need to replace them. Actually, the same thing is true with the defensive line as well. Uh, Fletcher Cox is still playing at a Pro Bowl level, but he's 31, so he's not going to be there for much longer, at least playing at that level for much longer. So you got to get some new guys in there, some guys that not only are going to contribute, but also are going to be cheap because, again, if you're paying a lot of your good players a lot of money, and the Philadelphia Eagles were one of the worst teams in terms of salary cap space for this year. They had to let a lot of guys go just to get under the cap. Um, I think it's a good move for both picks, actually. And again, like I say in every video, I really like to focus on those top 100 picks. Um, I will go over the rest of the um, draft for the Philadelphia Eagles, but again, these guys are all later round picks. It's going to be tough for them to even make the roster, and if they make the roster, they're more going to contribute on special teams, and maybe if they're like a defensive lineman, maybe as like a rotational guy. But as far as the rest of the draft goes, at pick 123, they attack a cornerback, Zach McPherson. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles secondary is not that great, so he might have a chance to start maybe a nickel or dime as a cornerback. Um, at pick 150, he took a running back, Kenneth Gainwell. Not even sure if he's going to make the roster. The Philadelphia Eagles actually have a couple of good backs. Um, at pick 189, he took another defensive tackle. Um, looks, like, <clears throat> looks like Marlon Tupelotu. Probably pronouncing it wrong, but I'll put it at the bottom of the screen so I can at least get it right on the screen. Um, at pick 192, 191, excuse me, you took Taron Jackson. He's another defensive end. Pick 224, you took a safety, Jacoby Stevens. And at pick 234, you took an outside linebacker, Patrick Johnson. So again, they did go pretty heavy on the defense towards those end of those um, picks. And again, with a couple of those guys being on the D-line, again, hopefully maybe they do make the roster and they're able to be rotational pass rushers. This way you can have some kind of cheap contracts there and kind of some fresh blood, right? 21, 22, 23-year-olds, guys that are younger, have more energy, right? And can act, get after the passer late in games. But even just focusing in on the top three picks, I really like the entire Philadelphia Eagles draft. Now, as far as the season goes, I don't think they have a particularly great roster. Obviously, they play in a weak-ish division. I really don't think the division is that weak. I just think, obviously, with Dak going down, um, Dallas obviously wasn't a threat. Dallas probably realistically would have won an extra two games with Dak, which would have won them the division. But again, the Giants are going to be a good team. I think Washington is going to be a good team. But I don't know how good Philly's actually going to be. Obviously, with Jalen Hurts, even though he was better than Carson Wentz, if you look at his numbers statistically, he actually wasn't good. He was in the bottom five in almost every passing category while he was the starter. But again, now that he knows he's going to be the starter, he's going to get a full training camp, a full offseason, right? And now everyone on that roster knows he's the guy. So hopefully for the Philadelphia Eagles team that he is able to play a lot better than he played. And also, again, with the, having the full offseason, hopefully he can get better and improve. He is a very young quarterback. And if he can show improvements and maybe show the Philadelphia Eagles that he is the quarterback moving forward, that is at least one big hole that will be filled in this season. Now, as far as the season goes, I think they're probably realistically about a four to, you know, seven, maybe eight win-ish team. I think more closer to four wins if Jalen Hurts struggles a little bit and you could see maybe that offensive line starting to get a little bit older, right? If maybe some of those picks that they drafted in the draft don't pan out and the offensive line turns to be like kind of below average, I think the offense could struggle. We already know the defense is, you know, really just Fletcher Cox and just a bunch of guys that hopefully make some plays here and there for you. But if Jalen Hurts can play well, I think you can easily see them win in seven, eight-ish games, maybe challenging for that division. But again, I think they're they're kind of like the teams that we're picking like in the top three, where I kind of want really want I kind of really more want to focus in on after the season's over what they have set themselves up for. Um, so their salary cap space for this season is going to be negative three hundred thousand. Now, of course, you cannot start the season at the negative. They're actually technically not in the negative right now, but after they sign their rookies, they're projected to be at the negative spot. So what's going to have to happen is before they sign some of their rookies, they're going to have to restructure some contracts or maybe cut a guy, maybe in a position where they drafted, maybe cut the fifth or sixth string wide receiver that you know is not going to even make an impact on your roster now that you drafted a wide receiver. So again, their cap space is pretty much at zero. So at this point, there's going to be nothing really to roll over. But their cap space for next year is going to be $16 million. Um, 
even though it doesn't sound like a high number, this year they were like negative 40 million. They had a lot of work just to get under the cap. So the fact that they're gonna be over the cap next year and they won't have to worry about releasing players and restructuring contracts is a win for the Philadelphia Eagles. But more importantly, if you look at their draft and all the capital that they're going to have next year, it is more than any team. Um, next year, they have their first, they have Miami's first for trading down from six to 12. And in all likelihood, they're going to have the Indianapolis Colts first. So they're gonna have three first round picks in next year's draft. That is a whole lot of draft picks for obviously trading up in the draft. If maybe there's a quarterback you like, maybe if Jalen Hurts doesn't work out or crazy idea, if the whole situation with um, Deshaun Watson gets cleared up and he's able to play next season in 2022, right? Maybe you use a lot of those draft picks to entice the Houston Texans to trade you Deshaun Watson. And now you go from having Carson Wentz last year, you know, Jalen Hurts this year to Deshaun Watson. That is a huge improvement. And again, even if you move forward with Jalen Hurts, you have a lot of draft capital. So now you can really start to rebuild this roster and it won't take you that long to rebuild it as well. So I do think my personal opinion for this season, it's gonna be a rebuilding year, but again, they've really set themselves up with having essentially, like I said, three first round draft picks next year. Again, you're gonna be able to probably release some of the older guys on that roster if you know you're not going to compete for a playoff spot. Like if they don't compete next year, if they win four or five games, you probably release some of the older guys that are owed a lot of money. This way you can clear some cap space if you know you're gonna go young and kind of rebuild this thing. It's pointless to pay a aging veteran 10 plus million dollars on the roster where it's like, hey, if you know you're not gonna compete for a playoff spot, you might as well save that money for the younger players when you draft, when their contracts come up. Now, obviously, like I said, I really don't like the Eagles as a team, right? As a Cowboys fan, they eliminated Dallas from the playoffs far too many times when I was a kid. So it's probably why I hate them the most in the division. But again, hopefully if you're watching this fan, if you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan, you don't really see any bias in there. Obviously, I don't like the Eagles, but again, I wanted this to just be informative. Again, if you are a Philadelphia Eagles fan, just wanted you to be able to see this and kind of see what their off season was like in a couple minutes instead of you know having to search and research and see what their off season was. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe. Um, it does help the channel out with more subscribers. But that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you guys so much. Bye.